In Australia, we have three levels of government. You've probably heard of the first two. The federal or Commonwealth government is the big one. That's the one with the Prime Minister. They all meet in Canberra and make laws and decisions on the big things like defence, foreign policy, immigration, trade with other countries, tax collection and spending. The state government is the second level of government. There's six of these around Australia, one in each state, plus two territory governments. In South Australia, the state government is run by the Premier and they all meet here at Parliament House in Adelaide. The state government looks after things like schools, hospitals, public transport, emergency services and utilities that we use every day. But the third level of government is one you might not know much about. It's called local government and it's operated by councils. There are over 500 different councils across Australia, with 68 being in South Australia. Local government is what we're going to talk about. We'll talk about how it started, how it operates, who is involved, what decisions they make, and most importantly, how you can get involved in your local community and make a real difference. It's exciting, let's get started. Local councils are dotted all over the place. Some people like to call councils the grassroots level of government because it's closest to you and your community. Some key functions of councils are to act as a representative, informed and responsible decision maker in the interest of its community, provide and coordinate various public services and facilities, and to develop its community and resources in a socially just and ecologically sustainable manner, to encourage and develop initiatives within its community for improving the quality of life of the community, to represent the interests of its community to the wider community. They look after things like sports grounds, parks, swimming pools, streets, footpaths, community centres, libraries, parking, street lights, town planning, and the list goes on. Basically, councils look after everything that makes your community unique. Councils pay for all of these wonderful things by collecting council rates from properties, either residential or businesses, within the council area. They also receive funding from the other two levels of government for larger, more expensive projects. Quick history lesson. Local government has been around in Australia, well, for over 65,000 years. The continent was, and remains, home to hundreds of different First Nations groups with diverse languages and cultures, and each group had their own way of governing over their land. While each nation differed from each other, traditions and cultural practices played a huge role in how the land was looked after and the rules that came with that. After European colonisation of South Australia in 1836, settlers in Adelaide petitioned for the establishment of a local government. If created, it would become the first European-style council ever seen in Australia. They were successful, and in 1840, the first council in the country, the City of Adelaide Municipal Corporation, was established. It lasted for three years before falling apart. Its relationship with the colonial government at the time was described as a grudging tolerance breaking out occasionally into active resentment whenever the council felt its rights were being infringed. Yikes. It was re-established again in 1852, and from then, local councils began popping up all over South Australia and the rest of the country. So who is actually part of local government? Who are the Prime Ministers and Premiers of councils? Well, it's a little bit different to state and federal governments, but I'll do my best to explain. The council is made up of a group of people called councillors. Councillors are people elected by members of the local community to represent their best interests and make decisions on their behalf by debating on issues and voting on them. This is very much similar how members of parliament or MPs represent you in state and federal parliament. Now the leader of each council is the mayor. For most councils in South Australia, the mayor is directly elected by the people in the community. But some councils pick a councillor to lead them as mayor. The mayor is basically in charge of the council. They run council meetings where decisions are made, put forward ideas to the council on behalf of the community, represent the council across the state and the country, speak to the media, cut ribbons and open new playgrounds. The mayors of capital cities in Australia, like Adelaide, get a bit of a fancier title. They're called the Lord Mayor, but they basically act in the same capacity as a usual mayor. Council might also pick a councillor to be the deputy mayor. Their job is to fill in for the mayor in case they are absent or busy with other mayoral duties. 
Now, each council in South Australia is comprised slightly differently. They might have as little as six councillors or as many as 16 councillors. Some might meet once a month and some might meet every two weeks. And depending on the community, geography, demographic and resources, the priorities of each council will be very different. For example, the city of Mitcham, a metropolitan council in Adelaide, might have very different priorities to say the Kangaroo Island Council, due to one being an inner city suburban council and the other being a more rural community separated from the mainland. But what doesn't change is that each member of the council is elected by people who are part of their community to represent them. So we've got the mayor and a group of councillors who make up the elected members, which forms the council. Does that mean it's these group of people who run the entire council by themselves? I mean, is it the mayor and councillors who go around and pick up the rubbish, work in local libraries and make sure our parks and playgrounds are up to scratch? Not quite. In fact, being an elected member is usually a part-time job. Most meetings and official events that elected members are involved in take place after business hours, which allows elected members to work, study and be involved in the community in other ways, which is great. Elected members can't do all of this work by themselves, so they get some help from what's known as the administration of council. The administration is made up of staff who do the actual day-to-day -day work of the council. Their job is to follow instructions provided by the elected members. Now, the administration is run by the Chief Executive Officer of Council, or CEO. The CEO is picked by the elected members and is in charge of the day-to-day -day running of the council. The CEO appoints staff to help them do this and leads the organisational side of council. Think about all of the people that are needed to operate council buildings, design new play spaces, fix up roads, keep your sports ground well maintained and carry out all the instructions by the elected members. That's the administration staff's job. This means there are usually quite a number of staff in the administration, depending on the size of the council. For example, the city of Onkaparinga in southern Adelaide is the largest council in SA by population, and they have over 800 staff working for them. Meanwhile, one of the smallest councils, the District Council of Oruru Carriton, in the mid-north of the state, only has 15 staff members. And because the administration follows the directions from elected members, and the elected members are of course elected by the local community, this means that the people have the ultimate say in what happens in their local community. Pretty cool, right? So let's recap. Local government is the third tier of government in Australia and looks after everything that makes your community unique. The first European Council established in Australia was right here in Adelaide. In South Australia, there are over 60 different local government areas called councils, and they all vary in different shapes and sizes depending on where they're located and who lives in the area. Councils are made up of a group of elected members, namely the mayor and a group of councillors. They are voted in by the community and represent and make decisions in the best interest of the community. The administration, including the CEO and staff, are the ones who act at the direction of the elected members and do the work on their behalf. But how are these elected members, well, elected? What sort of requirements do you have to meet to be an elected member? What's the system of voting to get them into office? And once they're there, what do they actually do? Well, find out all this and more in our How to Vote in Local Government video.